Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, so I just want to update uh, everyone would have listened to the PM's uh, press conference and I want to update a couple of other extra things. So, look, first of all today I want to say that if you are told to go into quarantine, you must stay there for 14 days. We have been doing this since day one and it is absolutely important that you do not leave those premises and go to the shops or go to the movies or go shopping. You must stay in your home and not move for those 14 days. And I'll, I'll make sure our uh, Chief Health Officer, Dr Young, addresses that issue in a bit more detail. Uh, one of the main issues we discussed today was the issue in relation to our Torres Strait Islanders and our Indigenous communities. It is very important that we protect during this time some of the most vulnerable members of our community. We know that um, many of our um, members of the Indigenous communities have um, some underlying health issues and if you're over 50, uh, the impacts of coronavirus for people from Indigenous and Torres Strait Islander communities could be quite severe. So today um, I am forwarding to the Commonwealth a list of discrete Indigenous communities across Queensland where there will be restricted access uh, for these communities. Now, yesterday, myself, the Health Minister, the Deputy Premier, who's also Minister for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Affairs, uh, we spoke to the mayors, and the mayors were very supportive of this measure. I want to thank the leadership of the mayors of their communities, because we have never asked you to do this before. Uh, at times, different communities have had to be isolated for a period of time because of cyclones and they're all very well prepared for cyclones but now I've asked them to do this and there was absolutely no hesitation. Uh, we'll be forwarding the list to the Commonwealth of the communities uh, but they include most of the Cape communities of course, Torres Strait Island, uh, Sherberg, I've got the whole list here that we'll go through um, and pass on to everyone. Uh, we want to leave um, uh, these will be put in place as quickly as possible, of course, uh, and of course only essential um, travel will be allowed. And what do I mean by essential? I mean things like emergency services personnel, medical, um, supplies of food. Uh, it's very important that we uh, put in these protective measures now. It is absolutely critical at this particular point in time. And I really want to thank the work that we've done cooperatively with the Northern Territory and also with Western Australia. The Northern Territory has put in measures across uh, the border with Queensland and we will look at matching those measures uh, with the Northern Territory uh, so we don't have a lot of people that would cross that border. So effectively we'll be putting up a border restriction across the west of the state. So I want to thank everyone for um, for that. We will also we also took on board the concerns of many um, uh, members of this community as well, these communities, about some of their children are in boarding schools. We are going to endeavour where possible over the next week to return children home to community uh, if that is possible. So I, I make that, uh, that uh, commitment that we will do everything in our power uh, subject to available aircraft to get children and where it is not possible we will make sure a lot of them are in boarding schools. We'll make sure that we talk to the different schools to see uh, what other measures we can put in place there. So that's a very important decision that Queensland has made today. So I hope everyone is realising how serious this issue is. This is incredibly serious and the next thing I'm going to say I want everyone to take heed of. And that is the uh, no more than 100 people in indoor gatherings which is four square metres that the Dr Young will address in more details. This is about social distancing. This is about being physically away from every other person. Now, I know many of you would be thinking, it's a, it's a Friday afternoon, it's beautiful weather, I'm going to go and have a big night out. Well, guess what? Now is not the time to do it. I'm sorry to the pubs out there right across the state. I don't want you to be having a big night out this weekend to anybody. This is the time now. We need everybody. Go home, be with your family, 
sit on your back deck, have a glass of wine, spend time with your kids, talk to your friends, but honestly, now is not the time. This is the time where we need to curb, make sure that we are st stemming that flow, making sure we're flattening that curve and making sure that we are having less physical interactions and contacts with people. That is absolutely critical. Let me say that again. It is absolutely critical during this course of time and we can make a big difference here everyone. If we all pitch in and do this together, we can make a huge difference. As I've said time and time again, these are uncharted territories, uncharted waters. We haven't had to go through this before. Now is the time for patience, for calm and for decent common sense. And in any rule book, when you're facing a pandemic, there is no common sense in going to the pub and having a big night with your mates this weekend. All right, I now want to address another important issue and that is members of our community who are 60 and over who have one or more underlying health chronic disease. This is very important. We know that this virus has a big impact on our most vulnerable. We've taken very good measures to look after our aged care. Now we also need to look at the most vulnerable members in our community. It is absolutely important that people in this category are limiting their social interaction. If you do not need to go out, don't go out. You should only be going out if it is an essential thing you need to do, such as grocery, shopping, or um, going to the chemist. But honestly, now is not the time to be spending, if you, ha are, if you are in that category, to be spending um, very close personal contact time with your grandchildren. And I know Gladys Berejiklian said this morning that she is not seeing her parents and that's a very difficult decision. And I'm telling you now, I am not seeing my parents. I am not seeing my parents. This is how important it is. And now I'm asking my parents not to see their grandparents for, for their grandchildren for a short period of time, to Skype with them, to ring them up by phone. But this is absolutely critical, everyone. We're talking about now protecting our most vulnerable. And I don't want to get to the situation in a month's time when you're saying, oh, if only I hadn't, I hadn't done that. We're taking every measure we can, every single measure we can. And finally, our Queensland Disaster Management Group will meet in approximately half an hour. This is all of our state government agencies working together to make sure that we are continuing to plot our path through this incredible journey that we are facing in Queensland. And finally, um, the Prime Minister said today we all have a role and that is absolutely true. Let me say that again. Every single one of us has a role and our role is to limit our social interaction. Do not go out unless it is essential. Do not go out unless you have to go out. Now is not the time to be having a big weekend. Now is the time to be spending it with your family. I'll hand over to Dr Young and then um, Stephen will say a few words. Well, good afternoon. So we don't have a vaccine at this stage for this virus. We don't have any therapeutics. But what we do have is 5 million Queenslanders who always come together and work together. What we all, every single one of us needs to do now is to follow the advice. It's really firm advice. If you're being asked to go into quarantine for, because you've come through the border, or you've come into contact with a case, or there's any issue, that means exactly that. That means going home for 14 days and not having visitors and not leaving the home. We are so lucky in Queensland. We have got support throughout our system. If someone's in quarantine and they need help, they just need to pick up the phone and ring 13 Health. And 13 Health will organise 
food deliveries if they can't get food. We'll organise pharmaceutical drug deliveries if they can't get the medications they're normally on. So that will be sorted. So, or they'll organise healthcare if that's needed. So it's so important. If you're asked to go into quarantine, that's what you're being asked to do. Because we know that people going into quarantine are the people most at risk of getting the infection and we don't want them to spread it to other people prior to them knowing they've got the disease and being tested. So that's the first group. The second group, and this group is even, in actual fact, more important. That's the people who are asking to go into isolation. The difference is we ask you to go into isolation if you're either being tested for the novel coronavirus infection or you have been confirmed to have it. So as soon as someone does a test on you, you will be told you must isolate yourself. You must go home and not come into contact with anyone in your household or with anyone else till you get the result. If the result is negative, that's fine. You can do what you would normally do. If it's positive, you're then a confirmed case and you are therefore required to stay there until you've recovered. Again, that's really critical. If you don't know what to do, ring 13 Health. They will assist you with getting any pharmaceutical supplies, any food you need, any support you need. You are not to come out of your home unless you need health care and call an ambulance. So that's if you deteriorate and you can't manage your disease at home. Reminding people that 80% of people are going to have a very mild disease. They'll be at home for that period. Lots of movies, lots of books. Be at home and there won't be a problem. 20% and they will mainly be those people over age 60 with one or more chronic diseases high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, lung disease are the main ones, or our Aborig Aboriginal Torres Strait Islanders who are 50 years and over. They're the ones who are, are most likely to end up with severe disease and it usually happens after day five or six of developing symptoms. So if they develop that severe disease, to call an ambulance, to really and truly, if they don't know what to do, ring 13 Health, of course, and get advice. So they're the groups that it's really important. Then for all the rest of us to protect ourselves, so those people are protecting the whole community by not going out, but for the rest of us who are well, who are out there in the community, to protect each one of us, what we need to do is maintain that 1.5 metres distance. So I think people know 1.5 metres. So maintain that between other people because that's the distance that you can get infected if someone um, is unwell. So really maintain that. And that's why that, uh, those requirements about gatherings have been brought in. So the, it's all about numbers. It sounds very clinical but it's about numbers. The fewer interactions you have with other people, the less likely you are to get the infection. So that requirement for people to gather in the one space, for less than 100 people to be in that one space, and in that one space, of course, it makes sense. You don't want 100 people in a tiny little room. Um, so you need to have four square metres per person in that small space so that you are able to maintain that distance and then outside in the open door in the open air it's about having less than 500 people because again you don't want to have too many people mingling because one person in a gathering of 500 if you're all moving around and talking to each other and interacting is a risk for those 500 people so that's why those um, requirements have been put in place for 500 and for 100 so all of these things are being done to protect all of us Plus, just get in the habit of washing your hands, 
um, making sure that after you've been touching anything that you wash your hands, clean your hands, try not to touch your face. It's really, really hard not to do that, which is why we've got the message of washing your hands. I could just see here while I was looking here at all of you, a number of you were touching your face. It's so, so hard not to do that. So wash your hands, maintain that one 0.5 meter distance. Stay home if you've got any symptoms. Just stay home and keep your germs to yourself. Thank you. Uh, today we're confirming 40 further positive cases of COVID-19 in Queensland, bringing the total number so far to 184. The Chief Health Officer has just outlined uh, how there is no vaccine and no treatment for uh, this disease. Fortunately, most of the new cases continue to be uh, in the south. Uh, in the southeast. Uh, the only tools we have to reduce the spread of this disease are reducing uh, the contact uh, with people who have it. And that's why, first of all, people we know who have it need to be isolated, either in hospital or at home. People who we suspect uh, could have been in contact with it, either because they've been overseas or in contact with someone who's infected, need to be quarantined for 14 days. But for the entire community, we need to reduce the number of people every person has contact with every single day and if we do that we will be able to reduce the rate of infection, reduce the number of people infected by each positive case. That's why uh, these additional social, isolate, social isolation, sorry, social distancing measures are so important. We've already heard about mass gatherings outdoors and mass, mass gatherings indoors but by reducing the density of people in rooms we can reduce the level of contact between people so that means uh, for uh, events uh, indoors uh, you cannot have more than one person per four square meters four square meters is about the size of the tray of a ute it's about the size of a queen bed doona uh, if you are planning to hold an event uh, work out how many square meters the venue is, divide it by four, and that is the maximum number of people you can have in that space. As the Premier says, uh, this is not a weekend to go out. This is a weekend to watch the Broncos win tonight on TV. Uh, spend the weekend uh, uh, relaxing at home, enjoying the fantastic uh, Queensland weather and reducing the number of people you have contact with. Sorry, so in line. Uh, I'll let Dr. Young talk about that, but that's something that would be considered in the future once there is a high lot of community transmission, and we're not at that stage yet. So most of ours have been from overseas, and let's um, also I also want to reiterate that Queensland was the first state that from day one, we have been testing and contact tracing from day one. So I'm very confident of the figures that we have, but I might get Dr. Young just to address that point. Yep. 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 Yes, uh, as uh, the Prime Minister indicated, uh, the decision was taken by the Prime Minister and all the uh, state and territory um, first ministers that uh, budgets would be pushed back to um, another time in the year. Um, I don't have an exact date yet, but I think everybody would understand that it is, um, it is absolutely impossible to uh, give any forecasts when uh, we don't know the final implications. So at the moment, I know the Deputy Premier and Treasurer is working uh, very much on uh, further packages that we will be announcing over coming weeks and uh, we are looking uh, especially at some uh, household assistance as well to families. I can't say at the moment, I'm sorry. I, I, I just don't have that information on me, Sarah. Yeah, look, my message is everyone needs to take this absolutely seriously. You can't see the virus. It's a bit like when you can't see a cyclone coming until it arrives. 
And I think people only have to see the images that are happening around the world uh, that no one is immune to this. It's happening in nearly every other country. So we are preparing, but we need to take some measures now that will help flatten that curve and will help protect lives. So I'm asking Queenslanders to do something they've never done before. This is like being hit by 30 cyclones at once. It is a moving feast. And as you know, we're giving updates as quickly as possible. And I've said to you before that the National Cabinet is working incredibly well, but so are our agencies. So in Queensland, we can do everything we can to prepare. And as we do with cyclones and floods, people listen to the messages and they respond. And I'm asking now Queenslanders to respond to the very key measure, um, measures that we are saying based on expert health advice. Your, your language or your rhetoric seems to be a little bit firmer than it has been earlier in the week. Very firm. Is that because you have been just arguing with us to do that? I think what we're seeing is, and it's been told to me by um, people living in other states as well, that there seems to be this uh, element of business as usual, especially when you get out of the city and go into the suburbs. Uh, what we need people to do is to do this social distancing. We haven't had to do this before. We've never had to say, don't come near us, don't shake hands. This is what we are confronting and this is what we have to do. The health advice says we have to limit our social interactions, we can't shake hands, we have to wash our hands regularly and we have to keep our distance from people. And that means the way we live our lives has to change. That means you can't go to the beach and sit on top of each other. That's not social distancing. We're asking people to change now because the consequences will be brutal if we don't make these changes today. Schools are classified just as some many workplaces as essential places, um, essential workplaces. So in relation to schools, uh, the expert advice is very clearly that they can continue. And uh, this is something that we are monitoring every week. I want every parent to know that we are monitoring this situation on a regular basis. And at the moment, all of the expert advice is that schools should remain open. And that is the view then of the Prime Minister and every first um, minister of, of the country. It is. Yesterday we saw 50 new cases, today we saw 40 new cases, so we are seeing new cases. But the vast majority of those cases are down in the southeast corner where our population is, where we'd expect them to be, and also the vast majority are due to people coming in through the border or contacts of people coming in. So we now are seeing more people returning home to Queensland from overseas, which is a good thing, but they're coming from countries where they're seeing increased numbers of cases. So it's really important that every single person who comes through the border, through into one of our airports from overseas, goes into that 14 days of quarantine. That's absolutely critical. And we are at the border handing all of those people quarantine orders. And what do you know about this situation with the cruise ship off the central coast of New South Wales? We know that there have been people on board there who've come to Brisbane. Yes. Do we know how many? Are we getting contact? What's the... Yes. So I've just spoken to my colleague in New South Wales about that and we are being provided, as we speak here, all of the names and contact details of all of those people who have returned to Queensland. They have already all been told that they must go straight into quarantine in their homes, so they're doing that. Once we get the list of names, we'll be contacting them to make sure that they understand that 
That is what they must do. Yep. But they didn't because their flights were cancelled. Is it possible that they have exposed people at the airport? They've been flying domestically, so they've been flying to yep. the domestic airport and they spent all morning in the no, that is the process we've put in place. We all believe that it is far, far better that people quarantine in their own homes whenever that is possible. So through all of this process right from day one, that people who come in who are required to go into to quarantine can travel on to their final destination. That's been put in place right from the start because it is just critical that people get to their homes. Of course, not if they're sick. So there are health checks done and if people are unwell, have any symptoms at all, they get checked. But if they're well, they're able to travel on. Then if they become unwell later, we go back and contact trace the 24 hours prior to them having their symptom. So that's been in place right from the start. We're aware of that and that's what's been occurring. Now, unfortunately, these people who are on the cruise ship, it wasn't discovered until they'd all left the cruise ship that they did have cases on board. So that's why they're all being contacted by New South Wales to tell them that they need to go into home quarantine and it's just a matter of when they were receiving those phone calls. So we're getting that information and we'll be contacting people as well. Yep. We have been given enormous support. So I've had um, retired doctors coming forward offering their assistance. So we're providing rapid training for contact tracing. Um, we're utilising medical students. Um, we're utilising a whole range of people. Other government agencies have provided their support. So I'm very, very confident that we'll be able to continue doing all that work to follow up cases and to contact trace. Um, I'm not aware of anyone who's needed to go into ICU. Of course, there was that um, very unfortunate lady who died um, when she travelled from Queensland down to Sydney and was unable to be um, re resuscitated. I, I'm sorry, I don't know about that particular example. If you send that through to the media team, we can find out about it. Yes, and we're working that through at the moment nationally. So I meet with my colleagues every single day from Queensland time, from one o'clock till three o'clock to work out all of those questions because there are so many of them. And we've never, nowhere in the world, has lived through a pandemic due to a novel coronavirus to the extent that this one has occurred. So we're all working these out rapidly but collegiately so that we have that agreement and that understanding across the country. So that specific question we're addressing at the moment. It's a very sensible one. Uh, look, NAPLAN has been cancelled. That was a decision taken by all of the uh, education ministers across the nation. And sorry, your second question was. Uh, okay, well, as, as the, Dr. Young said, uh, everyone is reviewing all of those decisions about schools, and if there is any change, everyone, you'll be the first to know. I said uh, after, over the next couple of weeks. Uh, not at this stage, um, but uh, I'll get Dr Young to have a look at that for you. Um, but like I said, we've been doing all of our contact tracing, but it is absolutely important that if anyone is feeling sick or unwell that they stay home, because if they do have the virus and they go out into the workplace, 
uh, then they can transmit that. So it's absolutely crucial that everyone plays their part. Um, and if we all work together, we'll get through it. I think people need to be sensible. Everyone just needs to be sensible. So go and do what you need to do. So if you know, need to go and do your shopping, your grocery shopping, that's perfectly normal. If you need to go to the pharmacy, that's perfectly normal. Uh, but if you were going to go to a party, maybe reconsider because it's that close contact. And you know, everyone's seen those images uh, in Ireland where the, people were told not to have close contact and they're all dancing and karaoke, doing karaoke and everything. Like now is not the time for that. Once we get through this, go crazy. But for now, let's do everything because I don't want to get to the stage in a month's time where we say, if only we had done that, if only we had done this. So I'm asking the media to please get this key message out to everyone for this weekend. Let's all be sensible and do the right thing. Let's protect one another and make sure we're practicing that social distancing and to make sure that we are having uh, less contacts than what we would usually do uh, on any given day or weekend. Yeah, I know this is unprecedented times. It's absolutely unprecedented times. Um, we've been having briefings from the Reserve Bank. Uh, the Prime Minister has been giving all of the states and territories updated briefings as well and everybody is trying to do everything they possibly can and I think what you'll see is a big effort from the country uh, focused on people and focused on their jobs and their livelihoods and it's it's happening internationally it's not just unique to Australia so um, all the measures that we are putting in place and we will put in place is about looking after people and, and getting getting them through the next six months the initial next the initial six months I'll have to find out for you. Yeah. And last one, I really have to go to our meeting. Can you explain a little bit more about the boarding schools and what the government's Yeah, I said that what we would be doing is um, a lot of families would like their children to come back to community. Um, and where it is possible to facilitate that, we will endeavour to do so. But there may be some cases where we can't do that. Um, so we'll be talking to the boarding schools about alternative um, arrangements that can be put into place. So. Uh, well, we might have to charter, we'll have to look at all of those options um, because uh, as everyone knows there's not much uh, even domestic travel at the moment. So everyone, let's do the right thing, let's get through it together. I know, isn't it wonderful? Yeah. Uh, Mike, well done and uh, can I just say now's the time to help your neighbours and if we had more people like Mike, um, the better the world would be. So if you can help a neighbour, drop them a note in their letterbox or drop it around the suburb if you can help out in some way. Uh, there are some people that probably can't get out and do their shopping. There's, uh, there's a lot of people that need help at this time and uh, I'm quite sure that some people have got some spare time on their hands could also give a hand as well. So let's, uh, let's do the right thing. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.